well that our prayer rise in thy sight as incense, and do not give our hearts to words or thoughts of evil, but deliver us from all who seek our souls for thee, O Lord, Lord, and we look in on thee, have we hope that thou wilt not forsake us, O our God, for unto thee are to all glory, honor, and worship the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed is the end of the Holy 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 ever, and unto the ages of ages. Shine, shine, O Jerusalem, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, the darkness and gloom shall cover the earth upon the nations, but the Lord will shine on you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Kings shall come to your light, and the Gentiles to your brightness. Lift up your eyes all around, and see your children gathered together. Behold, all your sons came from afar, and your daughters shall be lifted up upon their shoulders. Then you will see the fear and be amazed in your heart, because the wealth of the sea and the nation's people shall change their course and turn to you. Herds of camels shall come to you, and the camels of Midian and Ephah shall cover you, and all those from Sheba shall come bringing gold, and they shall bring frankincense and proclaim the good news to the Lord's salvation. All the sheep of Kedar shall be gathered together to you, and the rams of Nebaah shall come to you. They shall offer acceptable sacrifices on my altar, and my house of prayer shall be glorified. Who are these who fly like clouds and like doves with young? The coastlands waited for me in the ships of Tarshish among the first to bring your children from afar, and silver and gold with them in the sake of, in the, sake of the Lord's name. And because of the Holy One of Israel is glorified, because he has glorified you, foreigners shall build your walls and your king shall defend you. For I struck you because of my wrath and I loved you because of my mercy. Your gates shall be open continually and they shall not be shut day or night to bring you to the power of the Gentiles and their kings leading them. 
for the nations and the kings who will not serve you will perish, and those nations will be utterly desolate. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, with the cypress, the pine, and the cedar together to glorify my holy place. The sons of those who humbled and provoked you shall go to, the, go to you in fear, and you shall be called city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Because you were forsaken and hated, there was no one to help you. Therefore, I will make you an eternal joy and gladness and generations to generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and eat the wealth of kings. You shall know I am the Lord who saves you and the God of Israel who delivers you. It's, uh, the reading from Exodus. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginnings of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the family of households, a lamb for each home. If there be too few in a household, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of souls. He will make his count in lambs according to the needs of each one. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or the kids. Then you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, nor shall you break a bone of it. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. Thus you shall eat it with the belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Pascha. Uh... The reading from Jonah. Blessed man. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Mati, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach it, for the cry of her wickedness has come upon to me. But Jonah rose to, up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, paid his fare, and boarded the ship to set sail with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord raised up a great wind upon the sea, and there came about a mighty tempest, and the ship was in danger of breaking up. And the mariners were afraid and cried out, each one to his God, and they cast out the cargo of the ship unto the sea, attempting to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship and had gone to sleep and was snoring. The captain came to him and said, Why are you snoring? Get up and call upon your God, that your God may keep us safe so we do not perish. And each one said to his shipmate, Come, let us cast lots and find out on whose account this calamity is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. And they said to him, Tell us, what is your occupation? Where do you come from, and from what country, and what people are you? And he said to them, I am a servant of the Lord, and I worship the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said to him, What is this that you did? For the men knew he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What should we do to you, that the sea will calm after us, itself for us? For the sea continued to be tempestuous, and the waves rose up even higher. And Jonah said to them, Take me up and cast me into the sea, and the sea will grow calm for you. For I know this great tempest is upon you because of me. And the men tried hard to return to the land, but were unable to do so. For the sea arose and grew more tempestuous against them. Then they cried out to the Lord and said, Please, O Lord, do not let us perish on account of this man's life, nor bring righteous blood upon us. For you, O Lord, have brought this about. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. 
Now the Lord commanded a huge sea creature to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the sea creature three days and three nights. And from the belly of the sea creature, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God, and he said, I cried out in my affliction to the Lord my God, and he heard my voice. Out of the belly of Hades, you heard the cry of my voice. You cast me into the deep of the heart of the sea, and rivers encompassed me. All your surging waters and your waves passed over me, and I said, I have been driven away from your sight. Shall I look again with favor towards your holy temple? Water is poured over me to my soul. The lowest depths encircled me. My head plunged into the clefts of the mountains. I descended into the earth, the bars of which are everlasting barriers. Yet let my life ascend from the corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul was failing within me, I remembered the Lord. May my prayer be brought to you into your holy temple. Those who follow vanity and lies forsake their own mercy. But with a voice of thanksgiving and praise, I will sacrifice to you. As much as I vowed, I shall offer up to you, to you, the Lord of deliverance. Then the Lord commanded the sea creature, and it cast up Jonah onto dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach there according to the message I previously spoke to you. So Jonah, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, just as the Lord spoke. Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of God, a journey of about three days. And Jonah began to enter into the city, going a day's journey, where he proclaimed and said, Yet three days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the men of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least. Then the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and removed his robe and put on sackcloth and sat upon ashes. And it was proclaimed and spoken in Nineveh by the king and by the nobles, saying, Let not the men, cattle, oxen, or sheep taste anything, eat or drink water. So the men and the cattle were clothed with sackcloth, and they cried out fervently to God. And they each turned back from their evil ways and from the wrongdoings of their hands, saying, Who knows if God shall have a change of heart and turn from his fierce anger, that we should not perish. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil ways. And God had a change of heart about the evil which he said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But Jonah was deeply grieved and was troubled, so he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, were these not my words when I was yet in my land? Therefore I saw the need to flee to Tarshish, because I knew you to be compassionate and merciful, long-suffering and abundant in mercy, and willing to change your heart concerning evils. And now, Master, Lord, take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And then the Lord said to Jonah, Are you exceedingly grieved? Then Jonah went out of the city and seated himself opposite it. There he made for himself a tent and sat under its shade until he might observe what would happen to the city. And the Lord God commanded a gourd, and it came up over the head of Jonah to be a shade for his head, to shield him from his discomforts. Jonah rejoiced with great joy because of the gourd. But early the next morning, God commanded a worm, and it smoked the gourd, and the gourd withered up. And when the sun rose, God commanded a burning east wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head, and he grew faint and despaired of his life. And he said, It is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, Are you exceedingly grieved on account of the gourd? And he said, I am exceedingly grieved, even unto death. But the Lord said, You took pity on the gourd, for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came up during the night and perished before the next night. And shall I myself not take pity upon Nineveh, the great city, in which dwell more than 120,000 people who do not know either their right hand or their left? And many livestock. With the reading from Joshua. The children of Israel kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening to the west of Jericho across the Jordan plain. They ate of the unleavened and the new wheat of the land. On this day, the manna ceased after they ate from the wheat of the land. Thus, the children of Israel no longer had manna. They enjoyed the fruits of the land of the Phoenicians in that year. Then it came to pass, when Joshua was, was at Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him with a sword drawn in his hand. So Joshua came near and said to him, 
Are you for us or on the side of our adversaries? He said to him, I am now come, the chief captain of the army of the Lord. Then Joshua fell on his face upon the earth and said to him, O master, what do you command your servant? The chief captain of the Lord said to Joshua, Loose the shoe from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy. A reading from Exodus. So they took their journey from Sukkoth and camped in Ephraim by the desert. Moreover, God led them by day in a pillar of cloud to show them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire. Thus the pillar cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before the village between Migul and the opposite and the sea opposite Baal-Zephon. You shall camp before them by the sea. For Pharaoh shall say to the children of Israel, They are wandering in the land, and the desert has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will be glorified in Pharaoh over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. So they did. Now it was told to the king of the Egyptians that the people had fled. And his heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also he took six hundred choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt, and the captains over every one of them. Thus the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants. And he pursued the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out from on high land, from on high hand. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the cavalry and the chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them by camping by the village opposite Belzephon. Now when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, then Moses, then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the desert? Why have you dealt with us so to bring us out of Egypt? Is it not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? It is, for it is better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Then Moses said to the people, Be of good courage, stand still. And see that the Lord's salvation, which will he accomplish for you today, for the Egyptians whom you will see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Now lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I indeed will harden Pharaoh's heart and all the Egyptians, and they will go in after them. So I will be glorified in Pharaoh, and over all his army, his chariots, and his horses. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I am glorified upon Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horses. Now the angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And the night passed, but there was so much darkness and blackness, they did not come near one another all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord carried back the sea by a strong south wind all night, and made the sea dry ground. Thus the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went out into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were to a wall on them on the right hand and on their left. Then the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass, and in the morning watch, the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians, and bound their axles of their chariot wheels, and caused them to proceed with difficulty. Then the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and riders. 
So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were trying to flee. But the Lord shook off the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all Pharaoh's army that came into the sea after them. Not so much of them as one remained, but the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. The waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the Lord's mighty hand and the things that he did to the Egyptians. Therefore the people feared the Lord and believed God and his servant Moses. Now Israel and the children of Israel sang a song to God and spoke, saying, Let us sing to the Lord, for gloriously has he been glorified. Horse and his rider has thrown into the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. The Lord became a helper and a shield of salvation. Let us sing to the Lord. He is my God, I will glorify him. The God of my Father, I will exalt him. Let us sing to the Lord. The Lord brings wars to naught. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army cast into the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. His chosen capstans were also drowned in the Red Sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. The sea covered them, they sank to the bottom like a stone. Let us sing to the Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord, is glorified in strength. Let us sing to the Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord, dashed the enemy in pieces. In great goodness of the glory, thou broke the adversaries to pieces. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord thou hast sent forth thy wrath, it consumed them like stubble. And by the spirit of thy anger, the waters were gathered together. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord The waves stood upright in the midst of the sea, the depths congealed in the heart of the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord, The enemy said, I will pursue and overtake, I will divide the spoil, I will satisfy my soul, I will destroy with my sword. My hand shall have dominion, let us sing to the Lord. Lord Send forth thy spirit, the sea cover them. They sank like lead against the mighty waters. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord, Lord, Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorified in holiness, marvelous in praises, doing wonders? Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord, Lord, Thou hast stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them up. Let us sing unto the Lord. In thy righteousness thou dost guide the people whom thou dost redeem. In strength thou dost call them to thy holy resting place. Let us sing to the Lord. The nations heard and were angry. Hang seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Let us sing to the Lord. The 
the princes of Edom and the chiefs of the Moabites were dismayed. Trembling took hold on them, all the inhabitants of Canaan melted away. Let us sing to the Lord. Fear and dread fell upon them by the greatness of thine arm. Let it become a stone. Let us sing to the Lord. Until thy people pass over, O Lord, until thy people pass over, whom thou hast purchased, let us sing unto the Lord. Lord Bring them in and plant them in the mountain of their inhabitants, in thy prepared habitation, O Lord, which thy hands have made ready, in thy sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands established. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord The Lord reigns forever and ever, for Pharaoh's horses went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters upon them to sit. Let us sing unto the Lord. Lord, But the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Let us sing unto the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, let us sing unto the Lord. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen, let us sing unto the Lord. For gloriously has he been glorified. shall not be used up, and the jar of oil shall not run dry, 
until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. So the woman went in and did it. Thus she and her children ate many days. The bin of flour was not used up, and the jar of oil did not run dry, according to the word of the Lord spoke by Elijah. Now after this, the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. His sickness was so serious, there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? You came to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son. But Elijah said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on a bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord and said, Woe is me, O Lord, witness of the widow with whom I lodge. You have embittered her by killing her son. Then he stretched himself out on the child's three times and called on the Lord and said, O Lord my God, let the soul of this child come back to him. So it happened and the child cried out. He took the child and brought him down from the upper room of the house and gave him to his mother. Elijah said, Behold, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord is in your mouth, is the truth. A reading from Isaiah. Let my soul rejoice exceedingly in the Lord, for he clothed me with the garment of salvation and the tunic of gladness. He put a mitre around me like a bridegroom and adorned me with ornaments like a bride. As the earth caused its flower to grow in its garden, its seeds, so shall the Lord cause righteousness to rise up and exceedingly, exceeding joy before all the Gentiles. For Zion's sake I will not be silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until my righteousness goes forth as light and my salvation burns like a lamp. The Gentiles will see your righteousness and the kings your glory, and one will call you by your new name, which is the Lord shall name. You shall also be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and the diadem of a kingdom in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be called forsaken, and your land shall not be called desert, for you shall be called my will, and in your land the inhabited earth. As a young man lives in wedlock with a virgin, so shall your sons dwell with you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so the Lord shall rejoice over you. Wisdom. A reading from Genesis. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your beloved son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a whole burnt offering on one of the mountains, I tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and sat on his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split firewood for the whole burnt offering and arose and went to the place God told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. Thus Abraham said to his young men, Stay there with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the firewood of the whole burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. Then he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Then Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the firewood, but where is the sheep for a whole burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the sheep for a whole burnt offering. So the two of them went together. They came to the place where God had told them. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the firewood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, hand and foot, and laid him on the altar upon the firewood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. Then he replied, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know your fear. You fear God, since my, for my sake you have not spared your beloved son. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him a ram was caught in a thicket by its thorns. 
so he brought it for a whole burnt offering in the place of his son. Thus Abraham called the name of the place the Lord has appeared, as it is, as it is said to do this day. In the mountain the Lord was seen. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you did this thing, and for my sake did not spare your beloved son, I will certainly bless you and assuredly multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand on the seashore, and your seed shall inherit the cities of their enemies, and your seed, and in your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you obeyed my voice. Wisdom. The reading from Isaiah. Blessed God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because of which he anointed me. He sent me to proclaim good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach captive liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of recompense, and to comfort all who mourn, to give glory instead of ashes to those who mourn in Zion, the oil of gladness to those who mourn, the garment of glory instead of a spirit of indifference. They shall be called generations of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for glory. They shall build the ancient deserts, raise up those formerly abandoned, and renew the desert cities laid waste for generations. Foreigners shall come and shepherd your sheep, and aliens shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be called priests of the Lord and the ministers of God. You shall eat the you shall eat with the strength of nations and be admired because of their wealth. So they shall inherit the land a second time, and eternal gladness shall be upon their head. For I am the Lord who loves righteousness and hates robberies of wrongdoing. I will give their labor to the righteous and will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their seed and their offering shall be known among the Gentiles. All who see them shall know these are the seed blessed by God, and they shall have exceeding gladness in the Lord. The reading from the fourth book of Kings. Now one day Elijah went to Shuram, and there was a persuasive woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn there to eat some food. And the woman said to her husband, Look now, I know this is a holy man of God who comes to us regularly. Let us make a small room upstairs, and let us put a bed for him there, with a table, a stool, a chair, and a lampstand. And it shall be that when he comes to us, he will turn aside to this place. Now it happened one day that he came and went there, and he turned aside into the upper room and laid down there. Then he said to a servant, Gehazi, Call this Shunammite woman. He called her, and she stood before him, and he said to Gehazi, Now say to her, Hear me, you have shown us all this care. What can I do for you? Do you have any request for the king or the commander of the army? But she answered, I dwell among my own people. So Elisha said, What is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, she certainly has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha called her and stood by the door, and Elisha said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. So she said, No, my lord, do not lie to your maidservant. Then Elisha told her the woman conceived, and she bore a son when the appointed time came. And the child grew, and it came to pass that when he went out to his father to the reaping, then he said to his father, My head, my head. His father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. So he carried him to his mother, and he lay down on her knees until noon and died. And she took him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She went out to shut the doors as she left. She called to her husband and said, Bring me to one of the young men and one of the donkeys, and I will ride quickly to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why do you go to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lean onward, and do not slacken the pace unless I tell you. 
she rode and came to the man of God at Mark Carmel. And when the man of God saw her, he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, it is that Shunammite woman. Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, Peace. Now she came to the man of God on the hill and took hold of him by the feet. But Hahazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord hid it from me and did not tell me. So she said, Did I ask the Lord for a son? Did I not tell you to not deceive me? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, Prepare yourself and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, you will not greet him. And if anyone greets you, you will not answer. You shall lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So Elisha arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. So he went back to meet them and told them, saying, The child is not awakened. Elisha went into the house of the child and lay dead on his bed. He went into the room and shut the door against the other two and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and laid on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. Then he bowed himself down upon him and the flesh of the child warmed. He returned and walked back and forth in the house. Then he went up and bowed down upon the child down upon the child seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then Elisha called Ahazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and she came to where he was and said, Take your son. So she went in and fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. The reading from Isaiah. The Lord brought up the shepherd of his sheep from the land. Where is he who put his Holy Spirit in them? Where is he who led Moses with his right hand, the arm of his glory? He overpowered the water by his presence to make for himself an everlasting name. He brought them through the deep like a horse through the desert. Yet they did not grow weary. Like cattle through the plain, the Spirit came down from the Lord and guided them. Thus you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. Return from heaven and look from your holy and glorious dwelling place. Where are your zeal and your strength? Where is the multitude of your mercy and your compassion so as to be patient with us? You are our father, although Abraham did not know us and Israel did not acknowledge us. But you, O Lord, are our father. You delivered us and from the beginning your name was upon us. Why have you led us astray, O Lord, from your path, and harden our hearts so as to not fear you? Return for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes of your inheritance, that we may inherit a small portion of your holy mountain. For our adversaries trampled down your sanctuary, and we have become as we were from the beginning, when you did not, did not rule us, neither did we call upon your name. If you open heaven, trembling shall take hold of the mountains before you, and they shall melt as wax melts before the fire. The fire shall burn up the adversaries, and the Lord's name shall be manifest among the adversaries, and the nations shall be troubled by your presence. When you do glorious things, trembling shall take hold of the mountains because of you. From of old we have not heard, nor have our eyes seen any God but you, and your works which you shall do for those who wait for your mercy. For mercy shall meet with those who do righteousness, and they shall remember your ways. With the, the reading from Jeremiah. Blessed have. Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, and according to the covenant I made with their fathers, in the day I took hold of their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not abide in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will surely put my laws into their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be as God to them, and they shall be as my people. Each shall not teach his neighbor, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, 
for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful in their wrongdoings, and I will no longer remember their sins. The reading is from the prophecy of Daniel. In his 18th year, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits and his breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dora in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, and the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the, that image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and any, every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you, they do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. When they brought these men before the king, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. It is... If it, is, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is in the heavens, able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was strict and the furnace was very hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who, who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. And they walked about in the midst of the flame, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood and offered his, this prayer. In the midst of the fire he opened his mouth and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, and worthy of praise, and thy name is glorified forever. For thou art just in all that thou hast done to us, and all thy works are true, and thy ways right, and all thy judgments are true. Thou hast executed true judgments in all that thou hast brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers. For in truth and justice thou hast brought all this upon us because of our sins. For we are sinfully and lawlessly departed from thee, and have sinned in all things, and have not obeyed thy commandments. 
and we have not observed them or done them, as thou hast commanded us that it might go well with us. So all that thou hast brought upon us, and all that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. Thou hast given us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. Shame and disgrace have befallen thy servants and worshippers. For thy name's sake, do not give us up utterly, and do not break thy covenant, and do not withdraw thy mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac, thy servant, and Israel, thy holy one, to whom thou didst promise to make their descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the shore of the, of the sea. For we, O Lord, have become fewer than any nation and are brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. And at this time there is no prince or prophet or leader, no burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense, no place to make an offering before thee or to find mercy. Yet with a contrite heart and a humble spirit may we be accepted, as though it were a burnt offerings of rams and bulls and with tens of thousands of fat lambs. Such may our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, and may we wholly follow thee, for there will be no shame for those who trust in thee. And now with all our heart we follow thee, we fear thee, and seek thy face. Do not put us to shame, but deal with us in thy forbearance and in thy abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with thy marvelous works, and give glory to thy name, O Lord. Let all who do harm to thy servants be put to shame. Let them be disgraced and deprived of all power and dominion, and let their strength be broken. Let them know that thou art the Lord, the only God, glorious over the whole world. Now the king's servants who threw them in did not cease feeding the furnace fires with naphtha, pitch, tow, and brush. And the flame streamed out above the furnace forty-nine cubits, and it broke through and burned those of the Chaldeans whom it caught about in the furnace. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace, and made the midst of the furnace like moist whistling wind, so that the fire did not touch them at all, or hurt, or trouble them. Then the three, as with one mouth, praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is thy glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed art thou who sits upon cherubim and looks upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou upon the throne of thy kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. Bless the Lord, all works of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all waters above the heaven. Bless the Lord, all powers. Bless the Lord, sun and moon. Bless the Lord, stars of heaven. Bless the Lord, all rain and dew. Bless the Lord, all winds. Bless the Lord, fire and heat. Bless the Lord, winter cold and summer heat. Bless the Lord, dews and snows. Bless the Lord, nights and days. Bless the Lord, light and darkness. Bless the Lord, ice and cold. Bless the Lord, frost and snows. Bless the Lord, lightnings and clouds. Let the earth bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, mountains and hills. Bless the Lord, all things that grow on the earth. Bless the Lord, you springs. Bless the Lord, seas and rivers. Bless the Lord, you whales and all creatures that move in the waters. Bless the Lord, all birds of the air. Bless the Lord, all beasts and cattle. Bless the Lord, you sons of men. Bless the Lord, O Israel. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. 
Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Bless the Lord, spirits and souls of the righteous. Bless the Lord, you who are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Lord, Ananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Bless the Lord, apostles, prophets, and martyrs of the Lord. We bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. We praise, bless, and worship the Lord, singing and exalting him throughout all the ages. Bread 
brethren, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that a body of sin might be done away with him, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also be with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also consider yourselves to be dead, indeed to sin, but in life to God, in Christ Jesus, oh our Lord, and to your spirit. The, pro the great Prokimen on the seventh tongue. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belong all the nations. Arise, O God, divine counsel. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will he judge unjustly and accept the faces of sin? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the sinner.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where they, the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while, he, while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. Glory to thee, O Lord,
patience nor sorrow, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, for the servants of God, Ellie, Courtney, Mary, and John, Maggie, Tom, Alex, Linda, Brayden, Tom, Khalil, Allison, Mike, Lee, Terry, Jamie, John, Bob, Father, Nicholas, Father, Joe, Melissa, Jennifer, Bona, Christine, Alexander, Peter, Helena, Georgie, Janani, Duval, Pietro, Neonino, Mary Jane, Bob, Patty, Bridget, Michael, Sally, Carol, for Bob, Judy, Megan, Anna, Sean, Cynthia, Suzanne, Veronica, Clarissa, Paul, Anna, Scott, Anna, James, Lucia, Victor, Valentina, Alexander, Christine, Joseph, and James, and for the part and remission of their sins. salvation for those who are suffering, wounded, grieving, or displaced through civil war in Ukraine. Again, we pray for a cessation of the hostilities against Ukraine and that reconciliation and peace will flourish there. We pray the heart and have mercy. Save them, have mercy. 
precious gifts now offer, let us pray for For this holy house, for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray for For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray
Christ, let us ask the Lord. Let us ask the Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all life unto Christ our God.
blessed Ted, having partaken of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life-creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Have mercy and us to keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Oh, Lord, Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. supplications of the all laudable apostles of the first and throne of the apostles, Peter and Paul, patrons of this holy church, of our Father among the saints, base of the great Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, whose liturgy we have celebrated this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us for as much as he is good and loves mankind. Sabbath day. Thank you to the readers, singers, um, everyone who read this morning. Um, please come forward to um, venerate our Lord's tomb. Um, and in a few minutes, we'll begin um, receiving Servant of God James into the church through chrismation. You need to get some things to bring brought out here to get set up for that. Um, so those who can stay for that, please do. If you cannot, I, we understand. Um, but tonight, of course, 1030, we'll officially welcome the resurrection of our Lord um, and enter into the great saving eighth mystical day of Pascha. So may our Lord God bless